defenders are overcome by numbers. So I need a place that we can defend against large wave attacks. I also need some place safe to retreat to and actually sleep in case this takes more than a single day. Alright construction time it is. I use my earth magic to reshape the tunnel into a funnel about 25 meters in. At the entrance I create a room that will easily be able to be blocked off as a last retreat and a few one meter high walls at the narrow end of the funnel for us to hide behind and fight from behind them if necessary. My idea is to continue on alone and kite back a manageable number of monsters and have my little ones fight and level up until I feel they are at a level they can keep safe with me. My dragons do not have to be at an extremely high level because they can work together and that should act as a multiplier to both their damage and the level they need to stay safe. Now that construction is complete I talk to the dragons and get them to understand that they need to stay here and attack whatever comes running after me when I return. Or at least I think I got them to understand it. Off I go into the creepy, dark, spider infested caverns of doom. Get a grip mark. You are strong enough to deal with anything. I once again make a fireball and have it float over my head. This time though I increase its output. It is more for my own morale than a light source, I also feel I am less likely to have creepy spiders jump at my head if there is a burning ball of fire above it. I really am not liking this dungeon and I have not even met the spiders yet. Up ahead I notice a glow from a light source that is a different color than my firelight. As much as I hate it I command my fireball to remain in place while I sneak forward to get a look. As I approach closer to the light source I realize that the tunnel is overlooking a cavern. In front of me I see an amazing sight. A veritable forest of mushrooms, many of which are glowing surrounded by insects and other animals. It is like a rainforest of mushrooms. The only thing from keeping this awesome site as one of the top things I have ever seen in my life is the fact that the majority of moving things in sight are spiders. There are webs everywhere and it seems other than the insects of all sizes that I can see scurrying about, the rest of the ecosystem has been taken over by spiders. I see large ones that seem to be grazing in herds like deer, small ones that are acting like normal spiders catching insects some that seem to be hunting in packs both the large spiders and other animals. It is if some twisted individual said I wonder what would happen if I created a world just for spiders. Would they evolve to fill every niche? In this case the answer was yes. As a former science teacher I can appreciate the beauty and grandeur of what I see before me. As a person with minor arachnophobia what my brain is screaming is burn them, burn them all. I am unnoticed at this point because I am in a tunnel that is overlooking this vast cave. The cave itself must be close to a kilometer long and several hundred meters wide. All around the edges I see tunnel entrances like the one I am looking down on it from. Great this is why it is named Arachnid Warrens. This must be a small underground world where spiders fulfill all possible roles in an ecosystem. And with all of the tunnel choices I bet it would be easy to get lost. There are only a few things keeping me from hurling as much fire magic as possible into the scene below me. First is the fact that I do not even know if mushrooms are flammable, it might be pointless to try and burn this place out. Second, is the fact that I might kill myself from smoke inhalation since I am in a closed underground area. Finally, I am not sure I could survive a swarm of spiders from a cavern this large if I pissed them all off at the same time. Okay, time to retreat a little and come up with a plan. As I move back into the tunnel from which I entered I felt a small sense of relief. It wasn't as overwhelming if I was not directly looking at it. I know that sounds silly, but it is true. Intellectually I knew that the cave full of spiders was still there but without the visual I am able to calm down enough to start formulating a plan. The basic setup still has not changed. I need to draw some of the spiders into this tunnel and then eliminate them. The key here is to not draw too many. I can line the entire tunnel with traps so if I think I am about to get overwhelmed we can retreat to our hideout at the beginning of the tunnel. This sounds like the start of a workable plan. As I start back towards where I left my dragonlings I start breaking off pieces of the tunnel wall with my earth magic in about 30 centimeters in diameter sections. Each piece is about the size of a dinner plate. 
I then use magic to engrave them with explosion and pressure magic. I am basically creating the magic equivalent of landmines. The only difference is that I will place them on all surfaces as I expect that some spiders will not travel just on the ground but crawl on the walls and ceiling also. I am not trying to kill them with the explosion, as a boom that big might destabilize the tunnel. I have been blown up enough. Rather I am trying to get them to turn into shrapnel that will pierce whatever crosses them. I should wound at a minimum several at once with wounds adding up over time hopefully killing them. I reach my hideout and signal the dragons to follow me. I gesture and explain to them that they need to avoid the circles that I have placed all over the tunnel. They seem to understand or at least they don't set any off. Whatever works. We reach the opening of the tunnel that leads into the large cavern and I use my earth magic to create another set of defense bulwarks. Basically simple stone ridges to hide behind and protect us from distance attacks and being overwhelmed. Time to get this party started. Why do I always choose and say such lame lines out loud? Even my dragons are looking at me like I am weird. Oh well, it is too late to change things now. I pull my ridiculously large sniper rifle out of my inventory and start to set up a shooter's nest. I hope that I can take down a large portion of what comes at us before they even get to our tunnel. I also set up a mortar for more area damage to my right. All the different ammunition goes on my left. My first clip will be a mix of explosion, fire, ice, and lightning enchantments. I will carefully watch the results of the fire projectiles to make sure I am not going to start a giant mushroom forest fire which would smoke even us out. The mortar shells are just hardened rock with an explosion rune on top. This turns them into large scale grenades that go further than I can throw. Actually with my stats I can probably throw grenades just as far now and maybe with greater accuracy. I may have to try that in the future. With everything set up I give the area one more inspection. Preparation prevents piss poor performance as my pappy used to say. I give my dragonlings their instructions which basically boil down to stay put until they get within 10 feet then go nuts. Retreat on my signal, remember to watch out for the magic landmines I laid down. I look through the scope of my magic sniper rifle and pick one of the very large deer-like spiders as the first target. I slowly squeeze the trigger dot with a muffled hump, using their elemental spells to create this thing means I do not need a silencer, I send my first projectile down range. My favorite part about this magic weapon is that it runs on magic. This means there is no exploding gunpowder or primer that give it a kickback. In fact, if there wasn't a muffled hump it would be hard to tell that it even fired. If I remember right this should be an exploding bullet. Yep there it is. I blew off a single leg from one of the larger spiders. It is clearly hurt and also seems to have no idea what attacked it. This is perfect, a couple more like that and I should be able to start whittling down the largest of the arachnids. Hold on something is happening around it. It looks like the surrounding spiders either smell the blood loss from the one I shot or somehow sense that something is wrong with it, because I see them starting to surround the wounded one and it does not look pretty. There it is, they actually turned cannibal and attacked one of their own when it was in a bad position. This could work to my advantage. Over the next hour I slowly whittle away at the two larger sized types of arachnids. No matter what happens, whenever one is wounded the other arachnids would turn it and finish it off. However, after an hour there are fewer and fewer targets and those that are present are slowing down. They must be full from the buffet I have given them. I think that the numbers are low enough at least with the larger arachnids that my team of dragons and I can attack a little more closely and speed things up. I signal for the dragonlings to stay here and get ready and I cautiously enter into the cavern. I make sure that I am ready, Ma 12 rifle out, sniper rifle put away, shotgun slung, and hammer on hip. Okay, I can do this, I lift the rifle and start shooting at one of the last groups of larger arachnids while walking closer. 
After three more spiders go down I am finally spotted and assessed as either a threat or as food because they start moving in my direction. Mission accomplished. Now I need to retreat safely and not wet myself from fear as I see very large spiders running towards me. I continue to pepper the oncoming horde with the Mar-12 and walk backwards probably faster than I should. My nerves are starting to get to me. When the first spider gets within 25 meters of me, I say screw it and turn around and run back to the prepared defenses. As soon as I arrive I turn back around see that I have gained a few meters on them due to my stats, but they are still coming. I reload quickly and start shooting once again. Let the killing time begin. For about 5 minutes there is no change. Spiders run towards us, I shoot Mar 12, dragons shoot breath weapons, spiders die, and life is good. After that initial few minutes I start to notice that although we are holding the spiders back they are getting closer and closer to our fixed positions. I need to call for a retreat soon. When the first spider gets within 10 meters of our position I yell for the dragons to retreat. There are no arguments and I can see them turn to leave in the corner of my eye. I quickly grab two magic fire grenades from my inventory and send them towards the oncoming arachnids. I then turn and sprint as fast as I can, dodging the many magic landmines I set, back to the hideout I created. I can hear the grenades cook off, then there is silence except for the horrible sound of skittering legs on stone, then random landmines that are triggered start to go off. The sound seems to be getting farther and farther behind me. Don't look Mark, just focus and keep running. I have seen too many horror movies, as soon as I look back something will be there and I will die. Stay strong and keep running. There it is, the hideout, just keep running and then dive behind the rock wall for protection. Ready set jump, dive, spin, look and nothing. Nothing. What is going on I know I heard them behind me, I realized that in the last 30 seconds I had not heard any explosions from the tunnel behind me. I had just kept running on instinct. I am going to wait another 5 minutes just to be on the safe side and then I am going to have to go and investigate. Man that was a long 5 minutes. We do not know what happened to the horde following me, but now we have to go and check. I signal my dragons to stay close and we step out carefully and explore. About 150 meters down the tunnel we run into the first of the bodies. It seems my magic landmines worked quite well. The corpse is full of holes and it looks like the spider bled out. Beyond the first corpse the tunnel gets progressively more and more filled with dead spiders. Did we kill them all? That seems a little unlikely. Maybe we just killed all that ran towards the tunnel. That sounds more plausible. My dragons and I advance cautiously and after several minutes of picking our way through the dead carcasses we reach the tunnel entrance to the cavern. I carefully peer down into the cavern and see that there are almost no large arachnids left. In fact, we could easily avoid those few spiders that are left and move on. Nothing says we have to kill every spider even though my instincts scream burn them all. Chapter 42, How Big Can It Get There is a reason this dungeon is called Arachnid Warrens besides the huge number of spiders. Over the next two days after I decided that not every creepy crawly spider on the planet needed to die we wandered around the various tunnels and repeated our basic tactic of build base, set landmines, use sniper rifle to make spiders attack each other and then retreat. It worked quite well and when we needed to rest I just sealed off a room made from stone with my earth magic and we rested. The problem was that I did not start marking the tunnels we had visited until after I realized we had entered a cave we had already dealt with. I do not know how long it is going to take to finish this warren of tunnels. I am definitely glad for my unlimited inventory though. I had refilled it with everything I could think of before we left on our little expedition. I had enough resources to live for up to six months including food for the dragons before I would even need to consider living off the land. That is important, because even though I intellectually know I could probably eat and survive on spider flesh I really do not want to. The time it is going to take to clear this dungeon keeps rising in my estimation as we keep finding new caves. It has been two weeks now. 
I am overdue to be back in the kingdom by at least one week and I am not certain how much more of this I can take. Both myself and my dragons are going a little stir-crazy. Every day we wake up eat some breakfast and start the exploration again. I have cleared several different large caverns completely of spiders, but each cave has at least 10 tunnels leading from it and some of those tunnels have splits also. Every time we get to a new cavern it takes a solid 5 to 6 hours to prepare and execute our by now normal routine of killing a majority of the spiders. If I enter the same cavern three times I decided I should clear it out completely, because I would rather just take care of it once instead of having to move slow and pick my way to a new tunnel entrance. The dragonlings and I have completely cleared 12 caverns, partially cleared over 20 others and have explored on the order of 200 plus tunnels. Each time becomes more and more monotonous. The good news is our method of clearing has become more streamlined and if we ever find the end of this dungeon the experience rewards should be amazing. Yesterday saw us returning to the very first cavern. My group bunked down and today we are exploring one of only two tunnels we have not been down yet. I hope we finally find the end boss so we can leave soon. I still haven't had much luck with the maze of tunnels and caverns in the arachnid warrens. It has been another week and a half and still no end in sight. I feel that we are at least making progress because I have not seen the first few caverns in over three days. I think we may have finally stumbled into the end area of the dungeon. Up ahead I see another opening with the telltale glow of a large cavern. How many times have I seen this now, it is getting so repetitive. Suddenly Bruce growls and pulls on my pants leg. I was kind of wandering forward without paying attention. I need to be more careful, just because we have been doing fine so far is no reason to get complacent. Something is different. All of my dragonlings are growling and acting a little scared as we approach this new opening. They have not done this for any of the other dozens if not hundreds of tunnel entrances we have approached. Maybe they smell or hear something that I cannot. I better get refocused and make sure everything is prepared. I signal the kids to stay and I work my way forward with more caution than I have shown in weeks probably. As I quietly peer through the opening I see a cavern that is different from all the others. Glowing mushrooms still present, check. Giant metal door at the other end of the cavern, that's new. Spider the size of Godzilla guarding the door, check. Wait, what? I think my brain just snapped. I slowly and as quiet as possible retreat from the entrance. I signal my dragons and we retreat down the tunnel. No wonder the little guys were acting different. A spider that size should never exist, ever, for any reason. Okay quick review, end of dungeon found, probably, giant horrible arachnid that could squish me just by walking. Definitely, ideas on what to do, not a single one. I need to think about this and just being close to this thing is freaking me out. I decide that my little crew and I will retreat to the last cavern and finish clearing it out so we have a safe base from which to operate and figure out a plan to kill Spider Tiller. Another four hours of what is now mindless battle has calmed me down. If I can kill spiders the size of deer I can kill something larger. I just need a bigger weapon. Home, I wonder if I could create one. I quickly pull the stone up from the cavern floor into my overnight defensive walls and call in the dragonlings. I need to think about this idea and let it stew in my head overnight. I am already two plus weeks overdue, so another night is not going to make a difference. I would rather do this right and survive than rush and die. When I wake up in the morning and finish all of my needed business I decide that creating a bigger weapon may be my only hope at this point. If I had a group of level 100 or better people, then we probably could overwhelm even that giant spider through teamwork. However, my levels and the levels of my dragons will not increase until the dungeon is cleared. This means if I was to fight this thing head on it could focus on me and that would lead to a quick and messy death. All right. To be safe the new weapon needs to be a long distance one. Even if was able to create a godly sword of spider smiting I do not want to get close enough to that thing to use it. So that means some type of modified cannon or ballista. Or what if I combined the two. 
The problem with making larger cannons has always been that by the time the ammunition gets large enough to hold a bunch of magic inscriptions that would make it extremely deadly the size of the cannonball and barrel becomes ridiculous. However, I only have to use this thing once, I hope, and if I am careful and quiet I could install it in the tunnel and line it up for a shot without spider tiller even knowing. So a giant air cannon forward slash rail gun thing. I will call it the spider tooker. I know the magic inscriptions for pierce, explosion, and all of the elements. If I make the ammunition a metallic ballista bolt of a size that I can barely lift then I would be able to fit an amazing amount of power up inscriptions on it. I could basically turn it into multiple weapons on one ballista arrow. The arrowhead will contain the pierce inscriptions at full power to make sure it penetrates into spider tiller and every foot after that will be dedicated to explosion and each of the four elements. That way when it enters the spider's body the spider will have to deal with simultaneous explosion, fire, ice, earth spike, and lightning damage. The overall length of the bolt would be just under 6 feet and made of the hardest metal I possess, an alloy of steel and titanium. To be on the safe side I should probably throw a strength and inscription in between some of the damaged ones to make sure it stays in one piece. The actual cannon to shoot it out of can be up to 10 meters long before I would have trouble moving it enough to hit such a giant target. I can carve air enchantments, repulsion, and attraction enchantments along the entire length allowing it to reach an unprecedented speed when it leaves the barrel of the cannon. I better make three bolts just in case one doesn't kill it or I miss. I can aim, fire, and then run back down the tunnel safely because the spider tiller is just too big to follow into the tunnel. Other than the time it will take this should be easier than I first thought. I spend the next five days in a frenzy of creation. I use my earth magic to repurpose dozens of weapons and loose material in my inventory into the new spider tuka. Finally I am finished with my creation. It may not be the prettiest weapon I have ever created, but it will definitely be the deadliest. Over the next three hours I slowly transport the pieces into the tunnel and align it to fire at spider tiller who is being super cooperative and staying in one place just in front of the giant metal doors. Since that unholy abomination is not moving I am able to line my shot up with its head. Whether I can kill it or not with one shot, I should at least be able to damage its vision and senses. I have the Dragon Kids retreat all the way back to the last cavern where I have been working the past five days just to be safe. I then charge my first ballista bolt with a 1000 mana in each of the six sections, of runes plus another 1000 mana into the strength and inscriptions. 7,000 mana down the tubes in less than 30 seconds. I still have 3,500 left which should be more than enough to charge and fire the cannon. One last quick check, yep still lined up, I cross my fingers and dump 3,000 mana into the activation inscription on the cannon and sprint back down the tunnel without even looking. I would rather be safe than watch and have something go wrong. As I am running I hear an amazing range of sounds coming from behind me. I hear a roar, what sounds like rain, metal striking metal, explosions, the whoosh of fire, and the crackle of lightning and ice. When I reach the cavern where my dragonlings are I slow down and debate on how long I should wait to go and check out what happened. Before I even decide that I need to take a moment and congratulate myself for actually pulling off one of my ideas and staying conscious. My past history of blowing myself up during or just after one of my plans made me a little jumpy, but I finally finished one without injury to myself. Oh my goodness I hope I did not just call down a horrible jinx on myself. I better wait an entire hour now just to be safe. The hour has passed and I have not heard any sounds from the tunnel in over half an hour. The first half hour after the shot I heard several roaring sounds. Who even knew that spiders could roar, same clumping sounds, maybe the spider walking, that weird dripping sound, no idea on this one, and even a mysterious sizzling sound that lasted about 5 minutes. I do admit that after the hearing the sizzle I got hungry for bacon and the dragonlings and I had an early lunch. However, since the hour has passed I need to get back to work. I gather up the kids and give them one of my famous dad speeches. Alright daddy has to go check on the unholy spawn of Satan in the form of a spider. 
If this is the last time I see you I want you to know you have been the best set of dragons a father could ask for. I need you all to stay here and wait for me to return. If I do not come back in an hour then I just want you to know that I love you and I hope you grow up to be big strong dragons that can eventually take revenge on Spider Tiller for my untimely death. Appropriate speech delivered I turn towards the tunnel and start to work my way down to the end cave. As I approach the end of the tunnel I notice a few things have changed. First off is the smell, it smells extremely acrid almost like vinegar. Second I see rubble and holes in floor and ceiling. That was probably from the spider thrashing about. Finally, I see a large pit where my spider took a used to be that is full of an ominous bubbling sickly green colored liquid. My entire cannon is gone and in its place is that goo, just what the heck. Oh crap, I back up a couple of steps, that must be acid. That freaking ginormous spider not only has size but can spit acid. I call shenanigans. Unfortunately calling shenanigans does nothing and I am going to have to deal with the current situation. That sizzling sound I heard must have been the acid dissolving my cannon. I really hope the spider is almost dead because it ruined the masterpiece that I worked on for days. How rude is that? I skirt the acid pool and cautiously approach the exit. I have to be careful here there is a lot of rubble, almost as if something large and strong had clawed or stabbed the area in frustration. That brings my morale up a little bit. At the very least I frustrated it. When I reach the entrance I glance out and see the largest dull yellow eyeball I have ever seen. I won't lie, I peed myself in fear just a little. Chapter 43 the end of the Warrens I almost fall into the pit of acid as I stumble backwards from the sight of a giant yellow orb. Silence, all I hear is silence and my thudding heartbeat. Maybe I saw something else. Maybe I was too close for it to see. I know that I am going to have to look again, but I need a moment. I back up carefully behind the acid pit, I don't want an accident to happen. Wait what if I don't have to look? What if I just need to get a reaction? I like that idea much better. I pick up two larger pieces of rubble and scoot back into the tunnel a bit farther. Here we go, I toss the first rock over the edge of the tunnel entrance and listen carefully. I hear a splutch and nothing else. What does that mean? I decide to continue with my little experiment, it keeps me safe and lets me feel like I am doing something useful. My second rock sails over the edge and also makes a splutch sound. Now what on earth makes a splutch? Is that even a word? It's the closest I can get to replicating the sound out loud. I decide to continue my splutch experiment until something different happens or at least I get my nerve back. Five rocks later the splutch becomes a thuddy tick. Once again I know thuddy tick is not a word, but you try and describe these sounds, it's not easy. One more time, this rock is also a thuddy tick, and with me concentrating I can hear a soft splutch at the end. Alright, I am sufficiently baffled enough that I will look over the edge again. I approach cautiously with my shotgun held in front of me as if could ward off evil. When I peer over the edge I try and take in the whole picture without giving in to fear. The eye is still present but looks much less intimidating with several rocks covering it. Is it dead? I do not know of any animal that could get hit in the eye with rocks and not respond, but spiders are tricky creepy crawlies. I better make sure. I carefully wave my shotgun barrel around to see if it responds to movement. Nothing. Okay the ultimate test. I line up the shotgun with the eye and get prepared to run. I pull the trigger on the shotgun and a geyser of yellow and red goo gushes up and covers me. Gross. This smell is horrible and oh no some got in my mouth. After wiping my face off and rinsing my mouth out several times I realize that Spider Tiller must be dead for two reasons. Number one it did not respond to getting shot in an eye and two if it was alive it would have killed me when I dealt with the shower of gore that covered me and distracted me from what I should have been paying attention to. Alright, one giant spider monster killed. No explosions to knock me out but I did get covered in some of the most disgusting fluid known to man. I will retreat to the cavern where my dragonlings are and wash off before we proceed. 
Once I get to my dragons they start to run up to me and stop almost immediately. Yep I was right, I must smell horrible. All four of them retreat to a safe smelling distance and look at me like I am crazy to be walking around like this. I take the time to hollow out a basin in the floor with my earth magic, fill it with water from my inventory, and then heat it with my fire magic. Voila, instant hot bath. I scrub and clean repeatedly for the next half hour, having to create a new bath twice as I wash layers of filth off of me. I must be clean now because my little ones gather around me after the last round in the bath. Okay, time to move forward and finish this stupid dungeon. I set out with my dragonlings and as we approach the cavern with the dead giant spider I could see their noses twitch in disgust. It was so cute. I wish I could take a picture. Home, note to self when I get out of here check the great game store for image capturing devices and magic. Somebody has had to come up with it. We reach the edge and I cautiously look over one more time, who knows it could have turned into an undead giant spider. I still see most of a yellow orb and no movement from the rest of the body that I can now focus on when I am sure the thing is dead. We maneuver around the carcass and I look around trying to see and understand what happened. From the scarring on the floor, wall and the dent in the metal door, along with the rather large hole through a good portion of the dead spider I think I can put together a rough timeline. First off now that it is dead and I can look at it a little more subjectively I realize it is not quite as big as I made it out to be. Now don't get me wrong, it is still around 10 meters high and probably 20 meters wide with its legs which is gigantic, but it is not Godzilla size, it just seemed that way to me. It looks like the ballista bolt I shot penetrated right through spider tiller and hit the door it was guarding. That would explain the hole through the spider and the dent in the door. The back end of the spider is crispy and spattered with shrapnel, so it probably suffered secondary effects from the bolt after it hit the door. The spells worked but did not go off until it hit and broke on the door. I wanted them to go off inside the spider so it is a partial fail even though I managed to kill it. Speaking of which it seems that all the noise I heard was the spider's fury as it slowly bled out and died. Not the way I planned on killing it, but a dead spider is a good spider no matter how you look at it. I cut off and store some of the more interesting bits of the carcass and then approach the metal door. With a tremendous exertion of strength, I am able to open the door. Actually after pushing on it for about 15 seconds with no result I realize that there are rings on it and it was supposed to be pulled open. The side without the dent pulled open rather easily and the one with the dent did not move. I probably damaged something. Oh well the door is plenty big enough with just half of it open. I look into the room beyond the door and see treasure casually scattered about with several skeletons of animals and humanoids and what seems to be egg sacs. Wait, egg sacs, I have seen this movie and it does not end well. Bruce, you and I have work to do. Standing at the door and not getting close just to be sure Bruce and I use flame to purify the room of its infestation. After I am certain there are no more egg sacs or other surprises I start to explore with my group. I casually toss in whatever I find, weapons, gold and jewels, it is probably what most people would call a hoard but I have looted so much it was just more stuff to me. At the back of the room is a smaller alcove with a sign above it and a magic symbol on the ground. The sign read congratulations on finishing the arachnid warrens. If you managed to enter this area without defeating the Guardian, please be warned that you will be teleported in front of it. If you successfully eliminated the Guardian you will be transported out of the dungeon when you step on the magic symbol. Ok one last quick check around the room to make sure we did not miss anything and then I stepped on the symbol with my dragons. After a nauseating teleport, I wonder if there is a magic equivalent of teleport sickness pills, I realize I am outside the slime dungeon and in the middle of what looks to be a military camp. Why is there a military camp in front of the dungeon? Several soldiers have noticed my arrival and have drawn weapons and one has run off, I suppose to get someone in charge. I decide to stay in place until I know what is going on. In the distance I see my daughter and Randolph the head of my military council running in my direction. 
Before I can even think about what is going on I receive the great game notice for clearing the dungeon you have cleared the level 100 limited instance dungeon arachnid warrens. Calculating and applying rewards. You receive the title lost and found plus one for staying more than a week in a single dungeon. You receive the title Spider Bane plus 3 for killing more than 1000 spider monsters of at least 3 related types. You receive the title Top 100 plus 1 for being one of the first 100 people to exceed the level 100 on your planet. As the first being to clear a limited instance dungeon on your planet you will be able to select one unique skill or item from the great game store. Alright, another unique skill those are always helpful. I mean when I used my first one I got from the Buildmore Estates dungeon earned me two titles and the infinite inventory. The second one from the Bloodline dungeon I picked, I picked, did I forget to actually use my reward for a unique skill or item from the dungeon. Let's see, I came home, time was longer in the dungeon than I thought, I was prepping for the changeover, got distracted by family leaving early, crap I did forget. This entire time I could have had another unique skill or item that could have helped me tremendously. I have got to use these things as soon as I get them or what is the point. Now at least I have two things I can select. I need to do that as soon as I check in with everyone and clean up. I close the great game screen just in time to catch my daughter who was jumping into my arms. Wait, is my daughter light blue and scaly, daddy, we were so worried. No one knew what happened to you just that you were still alive. Interesting, how did they know I was still alive if we could not contact each other? I am sorry sweetie, daddy got stuck in a dungeon and communication was not allowed. Now tell me why you are blue and scaly. Dad that is not important, what happened to you? Oh, my dad's senses are tingling. She is hiding something important don't change the subject, what did you do to turn blue and scaly? Nicole looked like she had turned back into the six-year-old I remembered that used to get in trouble all of the time Okay dad I'll tell you, but don't get mad. I hate it when kids say that. I stay silent and just stare at her alright, remember before you left how some of the soldiers were taking me around to different dungeons. Yes well when I came back from the last trip, you had already left for your trip so I was bored and went into your office to write you a letter saying I was going to go to another dungeon. Still not seeing how this turned you blue. Well when I was in your office I saw the map you have on your wall and I started studying it. Oh man I know where this is going alright I get it you saw the bloodline dungeon marked, thought if dad did it I can, and then went to a dangerous dungeon without your guards. How did you know I did not take any guards? Well sweet pea, your guards would not have let you go to such a dangerous dungeon without my approval. Oh. Just stay still. Identify name, Nicole Anderson Race, Storm Dragonkin Level 36 41% Affinities, Air 100% Water 100% You went and did a dragon bloodline. Now dad don't freak out. Too late for that. Guess who is grounded for a month if not more. Dad you can't ground me, I am an adult. Don't care I am king and you will listen to me on this. I could see Randolph trying to hold back his laughter. I could fix that right quick Randolph. Yes sire. Thank you for volunteering to make sure Nicole follows my orders for the next month. His smile disappeared but sire my responsibilities. I interrupted him now include watching my daughter like a hawk to make sure she doesn't do anything else stupid. Yes sire. Now somebody please tell me a few things, first how did you know I was still alive, second why am I surrounded by the military, and finally what has been happening for the past month while I was gone. Chapter 44, Life Moves On Without Me It turns out that since I have not designated an heir, everyone knew I was still alive because there was no notification of the kingdom dissolving. I have to take care of that soon and have a plan of succession. The military was because they knew this was the last place I had contacted them from so they set up a search and rescue effort to begin with. But when they saw the limited instance dungeon and found out that it was occupied they realized that I was inside. 
so they kept one unit here as a precaution for when I came out and the rest I knew. My daughter was here because Randolph knew I would want to know about the bloodline first thing. Other than that nothing was wrong. The entire month that I was gone, everything went smoothly. More people came into the kingdom, efforts to expand protection and collect resources continued and everything else was running smooth. I was both relieved and a little bit insulted. I guess I was not as vital as I thought to the whole process. However, the good news is if they were able to smoothly run the kingdom without me then I picked the right people and I can continue my life of solitude and dungeon diving. All I need to do is check in occasionally. I told everyone an abbreviated version of events and let them know that staying out of contact was not planned, but was more me being unaware that dungeons could be that big. They all laughed and said things along the lines of father and daughter are so alike. I watched everyone pack up and then we headed back to the capital. After checking in with everyone at the castle I retreated back into my chambers to contemplate everything that had changed. First I need to check and assign my points and then select my rewards before I forget again. Status, name, Mark Anderson Master Tamer plus 2, Dragon Tamer plus 3. Dragon Master plus 4, Elemental Dragon King Bloodline plus 10, Evolver plus 2, Monster Slayer plus 1, Titan Slayer plus 3, Destroyer plus 5, Level Maniac plus 2, Survivor plus 1, No Limits plus 5, Undying plus 5, Transcendent plus 5, Top 100 plus 1 Titles, Quaid Lamentalist plus 4, Lucky 1 plus 1 Master Thief plus 1, World Traveler plus 1, Wealthy plus 1, Dungeon Explorer plus 3, Unstoppable plus 2, Army of 1 plus 1, Arsonist plus 1, Manifest Destiny plus 3, Not Nailed Down plus 1, Army of 1 plus 1, Scourge of the Undead plus 1. Think Outside the Box plus 1, Beast Tamer plus 1, Lost and Amp, Found plus 1, Spider Bane plus 3 level, 113-36% unspent attribute points. 480 STR, 155 HP, 1550 int, 255 plus 110% MP MP, 10,710 WIS, 255 plus 110% MP forward slash region HP forward slash region, 220% per 15 min dot AGI, 155 MP forward slash region, 535% per 15 min dot con. 155 plus 70 percent HP forward slash region luck 155 affinities earth 100 percent water 100 percent fire 100 percent air 100 percent all right I should split my humongous amount of points up this should work dot name mark Anderson master tamer plus two dragon tamer plus three Dragon Master plus 4, Elemental Dragon King Bloodline plus 10, Evolver plus 2, Monster Slayer plus 1, Titan Slayer plus 3, Destroyer plus 5, Level Maniac plus 2, Survivor plus 1, No Limits plus 5, Undying plus 5, Transcendent plus 5, Top 100 plus 1 Titles, Quaid Lamentalist plus 4, Lucky 1 plus 1 Master Thief plus 1, World Traveler plus 1, Wealthy plus 1, Dungeon Explorer plus 3, Unstoppable plus 2, Army of 1 plus 1, Arsonist plus 1, Manifest Destiny plus 3, Not Nailed Down plus 1, Army of 1 plus 1, Scourge of the Undead plus 1, Think Outside the Box plus 1, Beast Tamer plus 1, Lost and Amp, Found plus 1, Spider Bane plus 3 level, 113-36% unspent attribute points, 0 STR. 225 HP, 2,250 int, 355 plus 170% MP MP, 19,170 WIS, 355 plus 170% MP forward slash region HP forward slash region, 335% per 15 min dot AGI, 225 MP forward slash region, 603% per 15 min dot con. 225 plus 110 percent HP forward slash region luck 225 affinities earth 100 percent water 100 percent fire 100 percent air 100 percent that should put me beyond anything on earth right now and for the near future however 
I cannot slow down on my training as I am going to have to attend the planetary leader competition soon enough. However, first let's glance through the great game store and try and find two new unique skills. I do not need items and the last skill really has been useful. After looking through the great game store I have come up with four possibilities. This is going to be a hard choice. Each of them seem to be something that would be really helpful. Everything I looked through seems to be great but these four are the top, unique skill, shared attributes, your HP and MP are now one. Magic and health come out of the same combined pool. Requires 200 points in strength, intelligence, wisdom, constitution, unique skill, blink, you gain the ability to teleport an unlimited number of times as long as your destination is in your line of sight. No MP used, unique skill, advanced bloodline growth, you gain all your bloodline abilities immediately without the need for higher level achievements, unique skill, magic clone. In the event of permanent death you instead will respawn to a designated location with a 25% penalty to your MP and HP for 3 months. This ability can only be used twice in a 3 month period. No infinite respawns. I think that I can eliminate number 3. I will eventually receive all of my bloodline abilities and wasting a unique skill on getting them early seems a little wasteful. It would be a big surprise on the battlefield but that surprise would only work once, and then any advantage would be gone forever as people talk and they could prepare countermeasures in the future. Ok I have made my selection. I am getting Blink and Magic Clone. While shared attributes would give me a huge HP pool and keep me alive longer, the Magic Clone literally saves me from death. Blink is just great as a transportation tool, surprise tool, and a way to retreat if a situation calls for it. It is just too convenient. I mentally make my selections and close the great game notice telling me I now have those abilities. I need to get some sleep in my own bed and check on my dragons in the morning. I know that they have to sleep before the great game applies any and all upgrades to my pets forward slash companions. Morning as usual comes too early. I blink away the sleep and look at my sleeping companions. Time to wake them up and check on their progress. I can already see a significant growth in size. I am glad I have such a large room. They probably doubled and maybe tripled their length. Luckily about one third of that is tail otherwise we probably wouldn't fit in here anymore. I definitely have to set up a lair for them soon. I wonder what their levels have reached. Identify name, Elvira race, elemental air dragon level, 52-33% status. Companion forward slash pet of Mark Anderson name, Esmeralda race, elemental earth dragon level, 54-7% status. Companion forward slash pet of Mark Anderson name, Azure race, elemental water dragon level, 53-61% status. Companion forward slash pet of Mark Anderson name, Sir Bruce Shadow Flaming Ember of Doom race, elemental fire dragon level, 61-21%. Status. Companion forward slash pet of Mark Anderson they have improved a lot. They probably would have improved more if I had let them participate more in the dungeon. However, I probably claimed 75% of the experience given and they had to split the remaining 25% between the four of them. So their growth is very good. In the future I will be able to let them solo some dungeons to have them level up faster. Bruce once again was an experienced hog and has reached a much higher level than his brother and sister. It even looks like he is bigger than them by about a meter in length. Ha, huh, that is too convenient. If I am right, where is my measuring tape? It is true, every level is about 10 centimeters of growth for my dragons. Bruce is 6.1 meters long, Azure is 5.3 meters long, Esmeralda is 5.4 meters. And finally the small one Elvira is 5.2 meters. This is good information to know. In the future it will allow me estimate dragon levels from just their size. With me reaching level 100 myself I should be able to partially transform and fly now. I will have to experiment soon. Now that I have had some sleep and have had a chance to recharge, I think I can finally pull my mysterious king disappearing act. 
While I am gratified that everyone was worried about me the fact of the matter is other than me needing to rubber stamp some decisions, the entire place ran fine without me. This was my eventual goal and it looks like I reached it even sooner than I thought. Over the next week I will catch up on all the paperwork and double check that everything is running smooth. I will also build myself and my dragons a lair in a secluded valley somewhere in the mountains. I can commute from my new sanctuary whenever there is a pressing need for me to show my face or help out the kingdom in some way. If I remove myself now then they will rely on me less and less and eventually I will hopefully just be a figurehead that needs to show up once or twice a year. That sounds like a plan and I will start on it tomorrow. Today is a catch up and relax day. Chapter 45, My New Lairs My original plan has worked out perfectly. Although there were some weird twists and turns to get here. I let everyone know that I would be more of a figurehead from now on. After some protests and myself pointing out how everything worked just fine when I disappeared without warning for a month the arrangements were made. I have designated Randolph as my heir until the prince forward slash princess positions are filled. Once they have been filled if the kingdom needs a new ruler the council will select by secret ballot the new ruler from the four great princes forward slash princesses. In the event of a tie Randolph will cast the deciding vote. Now that the line of succession has been established I can finally create my own lair away from the daily grind. Originally I planned to just create a complex somewhere in my kingdom among the Appalachian Mountains, but I realized that I do not have to limit myself. I have access to the entire world and resources and I can establish a claim anywhere. My idea is not to kick someone out of their home but rather build lairs in remote, extremely hard to get to areas around the world. I can be contacted no matter where I am with communication crystals, except in certain dungeons as I recently found out, and I am only a single teleport away. My new plan is to establish five different lairs. One main one for myself and one for each of my dragons. There will be enough room in each of them for all of us, but I will be able to have them around the world which will make exploring different areas for dungeons, resources, and treasure easier. The general areas I thought my dragons and I could explore for new homes would be the Andes Mountains for my air dragon Elvira. An island for Azure my water dragon. A volcano or other hot area for Bruce my fire dragon. Esmeralda my earth dragon would be in a jungle setting somewhere. For myself I am having a hard time deciding between island fortress, I always dreamed of having one, or relocating to the continent of Antarctica. That sounds a little extreme, but I realize with magic now everywhere there are probably going to be several ice monsters and ice themed dungeons in Antarctica that I would have exclusive access to for at least several years until other people's levels and resistances get higher. I definitely would not have to worry about random guests or anyone else wandering by. You know what I think I talked myself into it. I will relocate to Antarctica. I will need to do some research in the libraries that have been recovered to figure out exactly where my new lair and my dragon's new lairs will be. However, the overall plan is now in place. Over the next week I transition myself out of large responsibilities. I want to start with only one check in a month and hopefully in the future get it down to only one or two check INS per year. I can always visit more often if needed and personal visits to family and such I do not count as working. After extensive research over this week I have decided that I will make Elvira's lair near either Cotopaxi, the world's highest volcano, or Marshu Pitshu. The first choice is to have environments that everyone might enjoy, and the second is because for some reason I just get the feeling that a ruin of a former glorious civilization is going to have a dungeon or something special associated with it. We will explore both and see which one has the best area for us. Sir Bruce, my little fire troublemaker is going to have a lair built somewhere on or near Mount Nairagongo in what used to be the Democratic Republic of Congo. I picked this volcano because it is one of the most active in the world, it was in a national park so there should be few if any survivors to bother, and finally because it will give us a base to explore Africa for monsters and dungeons. Esmeralda has several choices for jungle lairs but I think the best spot for her and our explorations in the future is in one the rhinoforests in Australia, 
probably Daintree. This gives us access to Australia where if history is any indication many unique creatures and monsters will appear and dungeons along with them. Asia is the hardest one to pick for. There are so many different islands that could potentially be useful to us for location and training. I think that a Japanese island would be the best. It will give us access to the Pacific Islands and is also close to the Asian mainland. Finally, for myself I have decided to build two different places. One mostly as a training and resupply base in the Faroe Islands which gives us access to Europe, Greenland, and Western Russia. The other in Antarctica as my initial plan stated. I will find a mountain in the Transantarctic mountain range and bury myself deep and make sure it is an underground tropical paradise with fire, water, earth, and air magic. I hate the cold, but with my changes I should be immune. However, immunity does not mean comfortable so I will create a warm underground paradise. The next two months leading up to phase three of the great game integration is spent on traveling the world, establishing the basic layers and exploring a few nearby dungeons. After exploring the area it was decided to establish Elvira on a peak near Machu Picchu. I was right in thinking that it had turned into a dungeon. In fact, it is the highest level dungeon we have found in the world barring the Bloodline dungeon. I registered as a level 125 dungeon when we entered. We only went in the entrance to register it and then left. No time to explore it further. We have finished several smaller dungeons that were close by just as a stress reliever. After clearing 10 low level dungeons I was only able to level once and the dragons managed an average of 3 levels each. The one good thing from this exploration is that we do know that quantity will make up for quality. In many stories low-level monsters stop giving experience at all, but in the great game it seems that they still give off very low amounts so if you kill enough low levels eventually you will increase in level. Phase 3 is set to begin on the winter solstice in less than a week. I will spend this time back in the kingdom and a few days after taking care of any administrative duties and watching for any changes I need to personally see to in the phase 3 changeover. I better review what phase 3 entails. Help please explain the third phase of great game integration. Phase 3 will introduce class B through S monsters to the planet and expand quests and upgrade dungeons. Help why were dungeons above class C available during phase 2 if it was limited to class C? This was a misinterpretation on your part. Level C monsters and below were introduced to the planet during phase 2. Nothing was said about limiting dungeons. What are the dungeon classifications and give examples. Dungeons are not given classification levels. Each dungeon is rated by what level a common group of five great game players would need to be to pass it. A level 25 dungeon would normally require five great game players all within two levels of this classification to complete the entire dungeon. Help can monsters in dungeons escape the confinements of the dungeon? Why or why not? Dungeons are separate existences located in a different reality than the great game planets. No dungeon monster can leave a dungeon unless captured or tamed by a player and removed. Help how are monsters introduced into a game world? Monsters are taken from other realities and placed in appropriate areas for their survival in new game worlds. Existing monsters in the game world are leveled up to fill any gaps when new phases are integrated. New monsters of types not previously introduced to a world may also be transported during each new phase. Alright, I think this means that we need to up patrols before and after each great game changeover phase. This way we can compare an area before and after the changeover to help see if new monsters have been transported to the area or if existing ones have leveled up. Thinking about the leveling up of monsters this means I need to make sure that regular subjugation requests are being funded to keep levels of monsters down around our survival areas. I should still be above the level of any monster that is transported in or upgraded during this solstice changeover. I will have approximately 6 months after this winter solstice until the final phase is introduced to Earth. After which I will have to prepare for the great game competition. I am not sure how much I can level up between now and then, 
but the more levels I get the greater my chances are to protect the earth from our own monsters and to do well in the great game competition. I wonder how many dungeons there are that can actually help me level up before I have to start going for quantity over quality. Maybe I can find out. Help can you explain the distribution and levels of dungeons throughout the earth. Dungeon placements are mostly random. If an area has a high cultural significance and was unoccupied the chances of it becoming a dungeon are increased. There will never be more than 10x level monster dungeons on any planet. General distribution of all level of monsters in dungeons are usually 10 more than the level above it. So SSS level monsters in 100 dungeons, SS level monsters in 1000 dungeons, etc. This is not exact as 